medic or to torture myself. I come out here to live a good life. And I love the wilderness and I love being in nature, so that makes a good life. But I don't want to have to suffer if I'm going to do that. So I want to have most of the comforts of home, but at least some of them. One of the things I want to have is cold food. One of the things I want to really have is a cold drink. But how, so how am I going to have a cold drink? And how am I going to have uh, a cold food while here in the middle of nowhere? So what's the solution? Well, for most of the people, it's a simple ice chest. You buy an ice chest, you put some ice in it, uh, and you got cold drinks. A number of, and I've done that, I did that for six years, and I tell you, I got really tired of that. Lots of difficulties. First, it's expensive. Uh, ice is going to be at least $2 a bag. The cheapest you'll find is a Walmart for about a buck forty-three. Uh, I figured I ended up paying about a dollar a day for ice. And that's assuming, that's not even including any lost food, if it gets in the water, if it gets spoiled. If I come out here and I want to stay 10 days, my ice isn't lasting 10 days. I've got to make a special trip into town to get ice. Uh, th that's all gas that I'm not including in that dollar a day. Fortunately, there is another choice. And today we're going to demonstrate uh, three different 12 volt compressor fridges. Now what that means is they actually have a compressor right inside them. You plug into a 12, 12 volt socket. They all will come with uh, this is just a standard 12 volt plug-in. You can plug it into your car and while you're driving along you can have it running. Uh, they're expensive. That's the big, big drawback. They're so perfect in every way, but they're very expensive. Uh, one of these is going to cost you uh, in the ballpark of $400 to $500 and up if you get a really big one. So, and you got to have solar. How much do they draw? So they will draw, I would figure, between 25 and 30 amps. Summer to winter it will vary, of course. They'll draw less in the winter. They'll draw if you're in a hot place, they can draw quite a bit more, maybe up to 30 or 40 amps. But again, 200 watts will easily power these and a pair of golf carts. This is, my, this is the smallest one. I bought this uh, in 2009, so I've had it for six years. It's a Dometic 25 quart CF, uh, CF25. This is a 33, a CF33, also by Dometic. You can see it's quite a bit larger, takes up a little more space, but inside, it's gigantically bigger uh, and if you just have no room this is what you're going to want the CF25 uh, and I have the two this winter is mine and this Dometic is mine this goes in my trailer in the winter where I live in the winter this goes in the van when I travel in the summer that's not going in my van it takes up too much space the winter is much larger uh, I latched it you can see it has big heavy latches on it and it's much, much larger. Just compare the size of the insulation in the lid. And also another comparison is the, the seal. In many ways, the winter is a superior product. Uh, it has a real com a fridge seal. This just has a little rubber gasket and a plastic. Uh, on this one, I've had a lot of problems with the lid comes off. And when, when I want it to, it won't. But uh, it, with it just popping off. Let me show you. This is the only thing that holds this thing together is these little pins. And I've had friends who broke the pin off. And what do you do? When you break the pin off, it won't latch anymore. The one way that uh, <clears throat> the Dometic is gr vastly better is it uses a do what is called a Danfoss, that's the brand name of the company, uh, compressor. And these compressors are have been famous for a long time for being high quality. and and very reliable, lasting forever. I had this one uh, six years. You've had yours three years, and they're they're holding up really really well. Okay, what we have is the Dometic 33 quart. It runs on uh, AC or DC. We have ours hardwired into DC. Uh, one of the things that I like about running it in hardwired is I take the plug. Off, I cut the plug off, and I run the the hot the the positive through a 15 amp fuse, and I hardwire it in. Otherwise, the connection tends to be weak, and it tends to heat up in that socket. You see, I have a pillow right here because the top of it isn't insulated that great. So 
you can feel the top of this or the bottom of this pillow is cold it's holding the cold air in which also makes it run less which extends the overall life of it and makes it use less uh, power when it's running um, so right here the 33 quart is about 14 inches wide and about 16 inches tall and including the handles about 27 inches deep th these can be set to shut off automatically if your battery gets low the reason that we bought this and this is uh, very important is we were spending about a dollar a day in ice which is about thirty dollars a month so over time this refrigerator pays for itself another thing is if you go to sometimes walmart and truck stops you'll see little coolers that plug into your refri into your uh, cigarette lighter they don't work it's got to be an expensive refrigerator it's got to be either a winter or an ARB or a Dometic with a Danfoss compressor otherwise it's it's basically just a waste of money unless you're taking kids to the soccer game and you want to have cold drinks for them and that's all you're using that cooler for but if you're living this way like we do you're gonna have to go ahead and just get the nice one we're going to look at my Whitner is the brand name of this fridge it's a very large fridge mainly that's one of the main things we want you to see is compare sizes see which size will fit you so I'll give you the dimensions. You can see that uh, it needs a space of 32 inches. This is 32 inches across and I would not have it any less. It's um, 33 and a half inches tall and again I would not give it any less. When I, sh when I open it I'll show you why. Mine's much too heavy to be sliding around. And it's 23 inches deep and again I wouldn't do any less. As you can see, I'm kind of a nut on insulation. The more heavily it insulated it is, the uh, the less it has to run. The less it has to run, the more power it 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 does. It uses less power. Uh, so I've kept, and just like James, I've got a pillow on mine. But I'm such a nut on insulation that I that's not plenty anywhere near good enough for me. So I've got a pillow, and then I keep. Uh, these are just cheap fleece bank blankets, and they drape over the side. And when I put my hand under there, I feel the cold. That's all cold that's staying down here and in. Uh, I, I glued a piece of, uh, this is a backpacker sleeping pad on top of it. Uh, and on the side, this is a one inch thick piece of poly ISO insulation, which is about the highest R value you can buy in sheet insulation, it's R7. I found these at Walmart and I fell instantly in love with them and, and you can't always get them and I did find them once on Amazon. And that, I just lay it over and so that you can, uh, it adds a barrier and this is cold, these are the gel stuff and so it goes over and I keep my condiments that I want to get in pretty easily on this side, uh, not on insulation, so I keep uh, this is another piece of, uh, of backpacker sleeping pad. It's very high insulation, reasonably high. I think it's like R3. But it keeps the air from moving around. And I've got mine plugged in. So this is how you set the controls. I'm at 36 degrees right now. To set it, you push the set button and then the up button. And I've turned it up to 42. Uh, and so now it will reset, it'll flash a little bit, and then it'll reset. Now the temperature is set at 42. Uh, it does kick out some hint, heat. The vents on these things are critically, critically important. You must never, ever obstruct the flow of air. If the compressor gets hot, it'll burn up. Uh, it's just the nature of all mechanical devices. A big advantage to the Whitner is that it blows out the front. It pulls in from the side and the back, it pulls in cold air, runs it over the compressor, it's got a fan, that's what you're hearing, and blows it out the front. So I never have to worry about, am I blocking the vent? Now to give you an idea of the draw, this is a kilowatt. Uh, this fridge will run off of both a standard uh, uh, cigarette lighter plug, you can plug this right into your car while you're driving. Because I'm running off 110, a kilowatt measures 110. Uh, that's the voltage. I've got uh, 116 volts coming off of my 
inverter. I'm running off this inverter so you can see the kilowatt. It's drawing 1.23 amps and it's running. That's at 110 volt. So that's close to 12 amps at, tw at, um, uh, at 12 volt and it's drawing 81 watts. This, this is a little higher draw than most but as I'll show you when we get it out and they're sitting beside each other it's quite a bit heavily insulated so it's got a fairly high draw. It's drawing 80 watts now. Hello everybody my name is Will and I'm here this afternoon to talk to you about my wonderful new upgrade to a solar refrigerator. Uh, so let's go inside and take a look. So welcome to my happy home. I'll put a few more lights on here and uh, we'll take a look at it. Uh, this is run by a 265 watt solar panel on my roof and in this compartment here I have uh, two uh, deep cycle AGM 104 amp 12 volt batteries. So that's the energy for the system. Now the refrigerator itself I, uh, I did quite a lot of research. One of the uh, things that I really liked about the Ingle, here I'll give you an inside view as well, is, uh, is that it's a very low draw amperage. So the average uh, amp draw on this refrigerator is between 0.75 amps and 2.5 amps. So it's very, very efficient. Uh, this is a 45 quart. Uh, they have smaller and they have larger. Uh, this one has a, uh, a nice removable basket. So the basket comes out and you can put your groceries in there and then pop it back in. Uh, one of the things on the, uh, the controls is that it acts as a refrigerator or if I wanted to use it as a freezer, I could just crank it up and it would also uh, freeze. Now it doesn't do both at the same time. In order to do that, the Engel makes a model that would be the 65 quart that would be zoned refrigerator and freezer. But this size for my needs was just perfect. So it fits in my space and uh, I'm very happy with it. So Bryce, you've got the ARB, what, how many quarts is that one? Uh, 45 quarts. Okay, so it's 45 quarts. Why did you decide on this instead of something else like a Dometic or a Winter or just a ice chest? Uh, well, I was on Amazon and looked at the um, at the comments, and there was uh, tons and tons of comments uh, on this particular brand, and they were all good, and it was top rated. And uh, some of the comments even said that people had it for 10 years without a problem. And so he put us left in the back of their Jeep and drove back roads and never had a problem with it. And uh, it's kind of more expensive. It cost me uh, $900 uh, plus some tax. But uh, I'm hoping it lasts me for many, many years and I really have no problems with it. Okay, can we open it up and see yeah. what the inside looks like Just and how the lift door. Up. So that's how the latch is. And then and the bottom, the very bottom part is the freezing part. And then this part over here Okay, it so you just get keeps the bottom. things cold. Keeps cold, and I throw my beer down on the bottom around noon, so it's like icy cold, like around four. Okay, so how long have you had it? I've had it a year now, and uh, I just leave it plug, leave it plugged into 12 volts. It uses very little electricity, very little juice, and um, run it off my solar, and I have had no troubles with it whatsoever. So here's to the good life. Not just the surviving life. You can do that at home in a stick and bricks house. Here's to the good life in God's nature, in total freedom, and living with all the comforts of home. Like a good cold diet Pepsi. Or, or for those of you who prefer adult beverages, to an adult beverage. Cheers.